Hey guys, so this here bringing you another video. Now this is the November Q&A. I do a question and answer video every single month. Basically, if it's your first time watching, basically because when I first started League or if I first started YouTube or whatever, I didn't really have anywhere to ask. And I'm not saying my answers are always perfect, but it does give you an option to ask someone, I guess. Um, so what we do, just to remind you, if you do want to submit questions for next month, all you have to do is... But there, oh, it's pretty easy, but there is the ask.fm link. It will also be in the description below, so you can go there and ask questions. You can also do it through these videos. I take questions from the previous Q&A video, so you can ask questions in this video and Facebook and Twitter. So that's pretty much it. So, first question from, or it doesn't say from, it's on ask.fm. Uh, can I give a, or can I get a legit rundown of Timo and his viability? Everybody just says he's bad, but never talks about him in detail. He can almost win all lanes and has great split, push, has great split push pressure and great objective control with shrooms. Can I talk about him in some detail, etc.? So Timo, <clears throat> he is... The thing without what I say, there is no smoke without fire, or whatever the saying is. If everybody calls something bad, there is obviously something there. You know, he's not going to be a miraculously really good champion with the whole of the community says he's bad. I am on the, the, the side, you know, I take everything at face value, I don't jump on hype trains, etc. But Teemo is not a very good champion. It's true, Teemo is annoying. He's kind of like a Quinn up top lane, I suppose. She's annoying to lane against, but if you manage to beat them in lane, they are going to be useless and whatever. So Teemo, if, if we take the standard top laners right now, and the top lane meta is all over the place, but if you have Nar, Aurelia, etc., at level 6, both of them champions can kill Teemo relatively easy. Both of them can have a bit of difficulty pre-6. Nara has a bit of an easier laning phase. But both of them beat Teemo after level 6. And that goes without saying with everything. If you have Darius, Renekton, probably even Nasus. The thing with Teemo, he's great pre-6. But after 6, he won't be really anything. And that's the thing. Why would you want to play a champion that, sure, he can bully people in the early stages of the game. But the games are usually won mid game and onward um as for team mushrooms etc when the game gets about 25 minutes to 30 minutes old people will usually have the sweeping ward uh, with the uh, with the um the vision attachment on it so they can just clear out your uh, you know your um shrooms and he's just not very useful you know his trading potential is okay and Timo's biggest strength is pre-6 in top lane where he just pokes people. That's it. You know, that is the champion. Yes, if your team just runs into mushrooms all the time, then he can be effective. But honestly, that doesn't help happen a lot, especially in the higher ranks. Uh, but yeah, I would never recommend people to play Timo. But thanks for the question. Next one is, uh, what strength is my glasses? Uh, okay, so as people probably notice, for the, the time I've done YouTube, I've worn glasses. Before these, I wore contact lenses, and I actually have some contact lenses here. So just to get the exact numbers. My glasses might be a bit different, but my right eye, if I remember correctly, is the better eye. So my right eye is six point, minus 6.5, and my left eye is minus 8. Uh, so if you know anything about glasses prescriptions, you'll know that's fairly bad. Like, if I take these off, everything's blurry. Uh, I actually have... <clears throat> talk to some opticians about potential laser eye, laser eye surgery when I'm like a year or two older because my eyes still have to settle down and they're like maybe we can do it but my eyes actually have a slight stigmatism that means their shape is a bit weird of the actual eye instead of having like think of a normal eye is like smooth like that mine's more pointy so uh, and they're saying that could affect something or other that I might not be able to have it done but who knows but yeah that's the strength of mine uh, next one is, hey Huz, notice you've been playing WoW quite a lot recently. What server am I on and what am I playing uh, in Draenor? Uh, so yeah, I actually have been playing a lot of World of Warcraft recently. Um, for those who don't know, obviously League of Legends is my main game. Uh, but I've been on a bit of a mini break right now. I think I needed one. Um, and it's great, you know, having a second game. And my second game now is World of Warcraft. And it's, yeah, it's really good. So what server am I on? I'm on Grim Batol EU PvP. And what am I playing? I'm playing a druid. Uh, I'm playing, hopefully, a balanced druid with a healing off spec. And uh, right now I'm level 100. I'm level 100 already. 
it's been a bit of a weird launch experience. The launch was not very good, to say the least. You know, a lot of lag, etc., login queues, and it's been pretty poor. But I'd say the overall questing experience was actually really good. Like, the actual zones, the quests, etc., was really good. But yeah, I'm on Grimbatol PvP server on Europe, and I'm playing a Druid. I will just say one more thing. If you are interested in playing WoW um, with myself, whatever... You can join my guild, but right now I think we're only really taking on socials as the raid team has way too many people in it. And I think we have something like 35 or 40 people going for like 20 odd spots or something like that. So I'm I'm fighting to get a spot. If I don't get a spot in the guild I'm in Vexthal, I might have to look for another guild or, you know, just, you know, explore other options, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the question. Um, next one is, what content am I planning to upload to YouTube while it's in preseason? Um, so preseason is a bit of a weird one. Preseason obviously is where ranked does matter. Obviously not as much, but it does matter. So I will still be playing certain games. Um, like earlier I played, but I'm so rusty. I played terribly in all three. And I actually am null tonight, which I'm a bit nervous about because I haven't been playing. Um... But what content will I be uploading? So the plan right now is to continue doing Platinum to Diamond. I'll probably play a game on Monday or Tuesday. I'm recording this, by the way, on the Sunday to come out on the Monday. Uh, so when I have free time, I'll probably play a game of Platinum to Diamond. The account is in Platinum 2 right now. So I'll still get that to Diamond probably in pre-season. Uh, you know, I want the completed series on the channel. Uh, so that will be continuing. And I'm not really sure, you know... Just in the time span, you know, World of Warcraft, there will be stuff. But if you just want League stuff, um, I'm looking to do champion guides and everything like that. But in January, uh, some of you may know, if you remember, if you've been subscribed for like a year, um, my university has kind of a weird thing that we do not have half term. We don't have any break from when we start to Christmas. So we have the whole of January off. I break up something like, let me actually look when I break up. I break up December the 19th, I think it is, which is really late. And I don't go back until the 2nd of February. So in the whole of January, and I won't really have any work set or not much set. Uh, so the whole of January, I'll have spare time. So I'll be looking to, to do a video, you know, every other day or every day. And that will be champion guides, you know, just more in-depth stuff when I can sink my teeth into it. Because I right now... It's been pretty hard because I've got World of Warcraft that has obviously come out and I've been playing a lot of that and I still have university assignments right now. They're, they're in by like a month from now. <clears throat> I think it's well, maybe like a less than a month from now and I've still got a lot to do with them. So this World of Warcraft weekend has really been a luxury where I'm not going to be able to play as much any of any game, um, you know, for the next three, four weeks. Uh, but yeah, preseason wise, Platinum to Diamond, Champion Guides when I have time... And Diamond Games. I really, really apologize for not doing any Diamond Games on the channel. It's just, I don't know. I want to get the Smurf content completed. And Diamond Games have kind of just gone to the side. But a lot of you, like the the vast majority of my subscribers subscribe for Diamond content. So, yeah, I need to definitely get back on doing that. So I do apologize. So next question is... Fairly long one, let's see. Hello, I'm a player who mained mid in the past, but moved away from it and looking for a new main. You like lots of champions for diversity, but you're a good farmer. Oh, wait, you but a good farmer to carry yourself. Oh, carry out silver. Any suggestions? Any role suggestions? And should you get should you let your pals get in? Uh wait, what? One thing I will say, if you are asking questions, really I understand some of you English isn't your main language. But really try just to make your paragraphs legible. Because sometimes it's really hard to understand what you're trying to convey. Um, you should let your pals get in way if they already play it. I don't know what that part means. Um, the thing what I say, to because when I stream and that, millions of people ask me the question. Hey, Huz, is that a good champion to main? Or give me a champion to main? Or is this good? Whatever. Is the thing with solo queue and... Here's the thing, most of my viewers, I've done I've done like little polls on that before. Most of you guys watching are in the bronze to gold range. You know, you're in that range of kind of low at your low. You're trying to learn the game so you watch a YouTuber. That totally makes sense. Um, so especially in that bracket, and I want to say in solo queue in general, anything can work. Anything can work. 
yes, there are stronger champions than others, but you can get challenger with anything as long as you're playing it in the right way. So if, if you know, you're trying to type a smart reply to me right now saying, oh, what about Janna AD carry then? It's like, well, no, play the champion in its strongest role and you can get challenger. Like, Teemo top, you can get challenger. Scion, well, Scion jungle, you can get challenger. The old Scion mid, you can get challenger. You know, you can get anything. As long as you play the champion in its strongest role, Urgot, you can get challenger, whatever, then you're fine. But all I'll say to that is look at what's in the current meta and how do you do that? A lot of people ask me that is you watch streams, you watch high yellow streams, you see what people are playing in Diamond or Challenger, you watch tournaments, you you do the research on probuilds.net because if you simply go on probuilds.net and you just go on the page of recent champions played, you get the whole list of what champions are being played. So you just see what's in the current meta, you go, oh, Akali is being played a lot in mid right now, I'm good Akali, I'm just going to play her more. Simple as that. But all I'll say is if you, say, play an off-meta champion, it's fine as long as you're playing it in the right way. So I won't give you a recommendation what to play. All I'll say is pick a champion you enjoy playing because what I personally find is when I'm playing, if I pick a champion that I enjoy, so say, let's say, Lee Sin, Nar, Kha'Zix, whoever, I play way better on them than other things. So my example would be, I play a lot better on Kha'Zix than I do Ramus because I just prefer Kha'Zix in general. So something like that. Just, just play what you enjoy. Next one. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, so it's a similar question by the looks of it. It's, I recently hit gold five, started in bronze four this season. Thanks to learning, thanks to learning to stay positive from your YouTube videos and stream. I've mostly main top and AD, but you've noticed that a lot of your games are easily decided by the jungler. Any tips for learning jungle, main, etc. Easy champions to learn, etc. Okay, a bit different. Um, so the first thing is well done on getting gold five and well done by trying to have a positive influence on the game. That's always good to hear. Um, as for jungling, jungling is interesting. Jungle, I would say, is the most different role in the game to any because, you know, if you're a top, you're still farming and you're fighting someone 1v1. If you're a mid, you're 1v1 and farming. Bot lane, you're 2v2 and farming. Jungle, you're not actually fighting any player per se. You're, you're diving into different lanes and there could be a counter gank. You could be counter ganking. You, there's a lot more to take in consideration. And this is why I kind of say jungle to me is the, the role that you have to think. While you're playing, you have to think the most about what you're doing. And AD carry is the, the least. Because AD carry, you know what your goal is, end of. You know, kill everything, basically. Do a lot of farming. Boom, I'm done. Support has to protect. And, you know, th that goes without saying. So to learn jungle... One, you have to have very good map awareness. Your mini map map awareness has to be better than any other role. It, to me, be to be a good jungler and support your mini your mini map awareness. That's hard to say really quickly. Has to be great. You have to be able to ping people really quickly. You have to be noticing people really quickly. Just in the corner of your eye, in the bottom or bottom right or bottom left of the screen, depending what orientation you have it. To learn it though, I would recommend starting with junglers. Something. Like, there's two types of junglers. There's aggressive and there's, you know, support defensive. So as for aggressive, well, someone that is kind of in the middle, let's say, Jarvan. Jarvan, I always recommend to people because Jarvan is always current. Jarvan is always in the meta, no matter what, from my experience. I've played LOL now for over three years or something like that. And Jarvan has always been relevant. You know, if there's been a point that it's like, well, recently... Only Lee Sin and Kha'Zix were played. What is the third champion that came around? Jarvan. Jarvan right now is really popular. So because I don't, I hate saying his name all the time, but Jarvan can be aggressive, he can be defensive, he can protect, he can engage. He's just an overall great champion. So pick him up. Another champion that is similar to that is Vi. Vi is also a great aggressive champion, but then also can be defensive. She can protect, she can engage, she has CC, she has damage. So that's it. Um, and then I'd always kind of have a balance. So as you have two AD champions, a Jarvan and Vi, I'd always pick up a AP champion. And for that one, I cannot, you know, I have to recommend Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks to me is super strong when he gets ahead and he's actually pretty strong even if he gets behind. Because if you land one good Crow Storm, you're going to turn a team fight. And in the new season, season five, with the new jungle, etc., I have a funny feeling Fiddlesticks is going to be one of the strongest junglers 
in the early stages of the season. Everything can change, but right now, if it stays the same way, look out for Fiddlesticks, because I think he's going to be one of the strongest easily. Right, next question. Does Riot ever do rune sales? As in decreasing the price of actual runes. And what do I personally recommend as standard rune page for a support? You know there's a lot of variation involved, but you need a standard set. Your, your main support is Nami, but you also play Alistair, Leona, Blitzcrank, Morgana, and Thresh. Uh, so as far as my knowledge, I do not recall Riot ever doing a um, rune sale. They used to bring out holiday runes, that the holiday runes were the exact same stats as the full runes, but they were cheaper. But they haven't done that in a long time, so I'm not really sure if they're going to do that anymore. And as for a standard support page, let me just have a look at mine. So my standard support page, here's the thing, you kind of, I have two support pages because you have one for tanky champions and you have one for AP support. So I'll go through both of them and I'd, maybe you can do both, I'm not sure, but some people may be interested. So as for the tanky support page and you'd be like, who do I use this on? So Thresh, Alistair and Brom come to Leona, I guess. So Quince is uh, three armor Quince. Reds is all of them are hybrid, so armor penetration and mag magic penetration. Yellows armor and magic resist blues. Fairly standard, gives you good damage, gives you good tackiness early. Uh, AP support page, so this is for Morgana, uh, Karma, Nami, Janna, stuff like that. So Quince, two armors and one AP. Reds is hybrid again, and you may ask why hybrid, not just magic penetration or whatever, because you're auto attacking a lot in bot lane. You're auto attack poking if you're doing it right anyway. Uh, then yellows, I actually go for health because you're playing an AP champion. You'll probably be a bit further back, so you shouldn't get hit by the AD carry as much. And health scales a bit better because you get armor anyway. And then for blues, actually I get AP, just pl flat AP blues that I can just kill the AD carry with, poke him, etc. And it works fairly well. So that's them. Uh, if you want to just, you know, you can rewind the video if you want to hear them again. Because I probably went through them quite quickly. Next one. So what time are we at? We're at 17 minutes. So these usually last about half an hour. So we'll, we'll, we'll go for another 10 minutes or so. Uh, can I make a guide on either Jungle Rengar or Jungle Lee Sin? Uh, so as I mentioned earlier of content I want to do. January is going to be the month that I do make guide content etc and yeah i'm probably going to be doing whatever champions i'm playing at the time and by the looks i'll probably stay as a jungler i don't see myself changing that much and yeah i probably will do one on rengar or lee sin or maybe both we'll see how much time i have as they are two of my main junglers right now so yeah thanks for the question um right um let's think um best mid europe uh, who is the best mid Europe? So here's the thing: like everybody says, Froggen is the best mid Europe. I do kind of agree because Froggen has it all. He can farm well. He can, you know, kill everybody. But there are different strengths. You have the best farming mid laners, and you have the best kill mid laners. I'd argue that one of the best farming mid laners is Kerp. I think yeah, Kerp used to be a greater farming. And as for a kill mid laner, then I would probably still say Froggen. Um, the, the, the two best mid laners for me are kind of both Europeans. One is Froggen, one's Bjergsen, but obviously Bjergsen plays in NALCS. But the reason for them two is both because they can farm incredibly well, because you'll usually see them the most farm in the game, but you'll also usually see them the most kills in the game as well. They kind of do everything. Uh, so that's that question. Um... Next one. So you know it's going to sound stupid, but you're in gold five and you tr really truly feel that your team brings you down. To be honest, your MMR is ridiculously low and you get 17, 13 to 17 LP per win. You do really well in games, but you got but you get careless people in games. So you end up losing. However, whatever. So here's the thing. You can never blame teammates for where you are in rating. It's just silly. You kind of said you answered it yourself. You said, you know, this is going to sound stupid. It is. Um... The, the whole thing behind ELO Hell and everything is that I should not be here because my team is dragging me down. But the problem with that whole argument is diamond players exist. You know, we, we all had to do it. We all had to climb. The first time we ever went up, we went through it. But we were good enough to climb. We were good enough to carry ourselves out there. 
So if you are saying, if, if what you say is true, that you always do well, obviously we're not well enough. The thing with climbing, especially in low ELO, you practically have to win the game by yourself. You practically have to carry the game, get objectives, ping everything, do whatever, and like don't make mistakes. So you're obviously not carrying enough. And the big thing that I always say to people, the big thing that I kind of say to what people should do is go into your... So I'm on the kite right now. Go into your profile, go into leagues, click on yourself and see more stats. Go into your champion stats. And what I want you to do there is forget about KDA. Do not care about kills, deaths, assists. They are irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. The thing that matters is win percentage. What champions do you actually win on? Because it's all great and dandy having a thousand KDA on Riven, but if you've got a 30% win rate out on her out of you know 100 games, you're obviously not good enough to carry on her. So look for champions that you've played a decent amount of, but you also have a very good win rate on, and they're the champions you should try and focus on on going up in ELO. Hopefully that will help, but again, don't blame your teammates. It just means you're not good enough to carry. You know, Take responsibility a little bit as we all, we all have to do it. Uh, next one. Thoughts on Vi for solo queue. Uh, Vi, I love Vi. Vi used to be my most played champion, actually. My most played jungler, that's for certain. Uh, she was the intro to my channel for a while, too. Vi is very good. I, you know, Earlier, I kind of said, you know, pick up Vi and Jarvan if you do want to pick up jungle. And I stand by that. You know, the reasons behind it is she's great at everything. You know, yes, there are champions that do better at things than you know she can like if a Kazakhs fight her one on one and the Kazakhs wins the Kazakhs is going to snowball but if a Vi can just farm in the early game maybe get a couple of ganks or kills in the early stage Vi transforms into an absolute beast in mid to late game you know if she builds if you get really ahead on Vi you can get Elder Lizard Triforce then go tanky with a Brutalizer you're going to kill everything so yeah, she's a great champion. I love her. Uh, she was bugged recently, but I think she's now been fixed. So I probably will be picking her up again myself. So that is that. Uh, so we have about five odd minutes left, maybe a bit more. Um, next one, what do I think of Lissandra? Lissandra is not bad. Lissandra is a good top lane champion. And I do say top lane. She can work in mid lane, but only against specific matchups. I'd only ever personally play Lissandra versus one as Zed or a Fizz. That is it. That is the only champions I personally will play Lissandra mid in. In top lane, she's actually decent against most things. She's okay versus Aurelia, as long as she doesn't get behind. She's good versus Nar. She can farm versus Maokai, and I don't even know what else is in the meta right now in top lane. I've kind of been out of it for a few days. But I know she's actually coming back into the meta in top lane, and I'm happy. She's a good champion. Um, so yeah, that's great. And then, last question based on a champion is thoughts on jace so i love jace jace has always been one of my favorite champions in the game actually and i think jace has a great position in both mid and top i kind of rate him more as a mid laner than a top laner um because mid lane everything most things in mid lane are really squishy and he does well against squishy targets you know he blows them up or whatever but he's also pretty good against the assassins or the likes of zed and fizz because if he gets them low enough and then he they all in him, he can sim simply just kill them. And taking exhaust on Jace isn't actually the worst thing to do. So I rate him really highly in mid. Top lane, he's okay. Top lane with teleport, you can just free farm for a while and then teleport and help your team. Also in the late game, you're still going to be useful. So he works everywhere. He's a really good champion. I enjoy playing him. You know, he's fun to play. That's kind of a big point. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So moving into the last few questions. Um, what is snowballing? Could I explain it in, in, in an easy way? Right, so the first thing I'll say, you know, the whole League of Legends terminology, a lot of people, when, you know, you're watching LCS and that, you know, commentators, you know, myself included, when I do videos, we use terminology that to us is really basic, but we kind of forget that to others it may not, may not be. But if you take the term snowballing, I'm not sure. It depends where you're from, really. But to, to, I guess, Americans and British people, it's fairly self-explanatory. When you're making a snowball, you know, literally out of snow, a real snowball in real life, 
how do you make it? You start with a little piece of snow and then you roll it down a hill. The more it rolls down the hill, the bigger and bigger the snowball gets because it's collecting more snow. And eventually when it gets to the bottom, it's massive. It's a massive snowball. So that's the snowballing effect. You know, in League of Legends, if we compare it, you get one kill and then you start rolling. You get another kill, another kill, another kill. And then suddenly you're, you're a massive champion that's really fed. So it's the same effect. That's what the snowballing effect means. It just means you're snowballing out of control. You're getting kills out of control and you're becoming really, really big. Uh, so hopefully that was a good enough explanation. I think that was okay. Um, and now moving into the next question is... Um, have I ever tried the game Awesome Noughts? IMO, it's a very entertaining to play with two friends. I think... From memory, Awesome Noughts is the 2D MOBA game on Steam. Uh, personally, I don't... I think I might have played it once when it was, like, in beta, so like several years ago, probably, and I wasn't a fan. You know, my MOBAs that I enjoy right now are League of Legends, obviously. Heroes of the Storm, and that's pretty much it. Smite is okay, but Heroes of the Storm, yes, I'm in the alpha. I've been playing it a little bit. Not really as much now, because, obviously, WoW's come out. But, yeah, Heroes is really good, but Awesome Noughts isn't really for me. Uh, but yeah, uh, so looking for questions, doo -doo -doo. Uh, let's actually move over to uh, another avenue because we've got like five minutes left. I did ask my Twitch subscribers um, if they wanted to ask any questions. Um, just to mention while we're going through it, you can check out the stream on twitch.tv slash fuzzy games. Streaming, I'm going to be starting to stream League of Legends again starting on Wednesday. Uh, if you do want to watch, feel free. But uh, when World of Warcraft raiding starts, I will be uh, streaming my raids, which should be really fun. Right, so next question, looking for them. Ba -ba -ba -ba, we're getting there. Right, here we go. Got some questions now. Cool. Um, it's loading. So the next one is, okay, so something to do with world of warcraft and the question is like i get it a lot on league of legends is can i add you on battle not battle.net so i thought well i may as well explain it here you know a lot of people try like right now if we look here on my friends list the whole friends list right now is full of people that are wanting to add me and the same probably is going to happen to world of warcraft the thing i'll say to it just get it out there right now is i honestly don't really understand why a lot of people want to add me in like league of legends or wow etc i don't get it personally I, I'm flattered that people want me on their friends list, but I don't really see the point of having people on my friends list that I'm not actively going to speak to a lot. That's just me. Um, and obviously there is the risk of, you know, if I add a fan or whatever you want to call a viewer, that I potentially can get spammed. So I generally don't really add people unless, you know, they deserve to be add, added, I guess, or if I'm giving something back to them. So if, say, like a Twitch subscriber... To say thank you for them, I give them the option to be added on League. You know, that that's just me saying thank you. And they can ask me a question, uh, occasional questions in-game. That's the least I can do for them subscribing. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, but I think that's pretty much it for this uh, episode. I, I didn't really put out there in a Facebook message or anything that I need questions. So we pretty much just used everything that I've got. Uh, so again, if you want to participate in next month's Q&A, that will be December's, uh, then go to the ask.fm link up there. It will be in the description if you can't be bothered to type it out. Or just leave your questions below and I will look through that next time. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on Wednesday with some League of Legends content. So, well, goodbye.